Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. You made a great decision to be part of this one because our guest is Chris Collinsworth. Chris Collinsworth knows all about the Cincinnati Bengals. Chris Collinsworth played for the Cincinnati Bengals at a Pro Bowl level. Chris Collinsworth is now an NBC analyst, Emmy Award after Emmy Award. He was in the booth when the Bengals beat the Baltimore Ravens for the second consecutive week and during the playoffs. He's got a lot to talk about in that regard. You're going to like it because you know what? It's Chris Collinsworth. You made a great decision joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics because today we are in studio with a living legend, the iconic Chris Collinsworth, not only a great football player at every level, high school, college, National Football League, left his mark everywhere. He is a perennial award-winning color analyst for NBC and other networks during the course of his star-studded career. How many Emmys in a row is it? Like about 100? Chris Collinsworth, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> not even close, bro. Oh, man. It's it's not an Emmy if you don't win it. That's a fraud, man. I mean, <laughs> you are the man. And appreciate you giving us your time. Got it. I know it's a, I know it's a hectic time for you, but we got to start with how about them Bengals? Was that the craziest game you've seen, Chris, in a while? The way that thing uh, played out? I've I've seen some crazy games over the years, but I I don't think I've seen a play change everything i mean you're talking about two different seasons and, and who knows what baltimore comes out of there with because they might have gotten lamar jackson back the following week and so now you go okay lamar going to kansas city with that defense playing the way they're playing and all of a sudden this thing gets really interesting right and um so but i you know give them credit the bengals took advantage of it logan wilson got that ball out of there when they tried to extend it across the goal line and Sam Hubbard is probably still on oxygen at this point trying to run down the field and but uh we didn't didn't get that penalty called on the on the block that was a good thing yeah. uh, Terry McCauley yeah. in our booth was like uh, I don't know I so, hear you I was the same way <laughs> uh, it was uh but it was it was a great experience you know for you and I got to experience it firsthand and the 80s and all the raw emotion the Super Bowl run can do for a city and there's always you know just so many I it, it's just great for me to see this city come alive the way that it has it, it's just been fantastic and and that that pre-game uh, little program with the light show and everything it, it's they did it the week before and the final regular season game against Baltimore. And it's like, it's almost like a Super Bowl venue when that, when that's going on. It's crazy. Yeah, it really is. It's been, it's been really fun. Uh, and, and I've got to give the, the Bengals some credit. And, and I'm, I think it's Mike Brown's granddaughters who are getting it done, but that they've done the things with the lights and there's expenses involved with all that. And they just are going all in and, I think pretty soon they'll be going all in on some contracts here too. So it'll be nice to see uh, Joe and Jamar and T and some of those guys locked up so we can watch them for a long time. You know, so many things happened on that, uh, on that play that you're talking about with respect to Sam Hubbard before that they bust out a 35 yard run that, that Jesse Bates comes off a block and makes a hustle play and knocks him out at the two yard line and doesn't allow the touchdown. That's a 14 point tackle as it turned out because they have the goal line sequence and then the 14 point turnover, like you just described. I mean, all of that unfolds. And in my mind, two things, uh, the Bengals won the turnover battle and they scored a defensive touchdown on the one that they wanted on. They had two takes and one give and in the red zone. I mean, they hold Baltimore to one touchdown and four red zone opportunities, low red zone inside the 10 yard line, one touchdown and three opportunities. I mean, Baltimore left a ton of points on that football field and that was the difference in the game. Yeah, it really was. And, and especially when you consider that a was out of the game already, Eli Apple had to miss a chunk of it. Uh, and in some way they kind of caught a little bit of a break because 
Cam Taylor Britt was not able to practice all week. And so some of those other guys did get snaps. We saw Dax Hill in practice playing the, the true cornerback position on the outside. We saw some Alan George in practice. So I think they probably had a little higher level of confidence in those guys than maybe what they might have had uh, just because they saw good things in practice that week. And, and we knew that it's a division game. They know each other cold. You know, Baltimore did not run any quarterback run package in the final regular season game, so you knew it was coming in the playoffs, and it did. I mean, they had some great misdirection stuff, you know, in store. They did a they did a really good job, and you knew there was potential to muck it up for each other, and that's exactly what happened. They mucked it up big, didn't they? Well, and, and talking to Greg Roman, their offensive coordinator, uh, they didn't game plan at all the week 18 game. They just ran outside zone, inside zone, no quarterback runs, no, right. nothing specific to the Bengals at all, right. uh, like it was a preseason game. And so, but you knew both teams were going to be loaded for bear coming right back. But I, I do agree with the point that some of the players were making that just how hard it is to beat anybody two games in a row, much less a division rival and a team that's playing defense the way that they are. You know, since they got Roquan Smith, that team has been a load to try and beat. I mean, they really have been tremendous on the defensive side. The Bengals jumped out to a good start, um, but I, I never felt like that game was going to be a runaway. I, it's just to me, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, it don't, you just don't you don't blow out those teams. I know the Bengals got them in a big way in the, back in Baltimore a few years ago. Um, but that's that's a pretty rare occurrence. That's a that's a very prideful organization, um, and you know if Lamar Jackson's playing in that game, that one's that one's tough. No question. I mean, as you say, the AFC North, fourteen Pro Bowlers, the most of any division in football, and the Ravens have six of them: two on offense, two on defense, and two specialists. Now, one return guys on IR. They got the greatest kicker that ever laced them up. On special teams that that is that's a good football team there's no question about it I, I i think if you win the afc north and survive you know the other part of the season the bengals go they lose their first three division games then win the last three but they go nine and one against everybody else and three and three in the division the ravens win the first three lose the last three so you know their season kind of reversed but you're battle tested when you play in the afc north aren't you you are, and, and what's going to be interesting is to play this forward a little now um, because you go, okay, Kansas City got a bye week. Remember, both number one seeds last year, the only time we only had one number one seed in each conference, uh, they, they both got beat on right. opening weekend. Right. So now right. Jacksonville, after playing in one of those crazy games against the Chargers down there, they come back, maybe they're a little bit more battle tested there. And whoever comes out of Buffalo against Cincinnati after the games that they've already been through with Baltimore and Miami, then come back to a tough test like these two teams are, uh, you know, going into Kansas City, they're going to be ready, right? I mean, that's they're loaded up at that point. And both of those teams beat Kansas City right. this year already. So, and the Bengals have beaten them three straight. So there are, there's so many things, but to me, it really comes down to, you know, how do they survive the injuries on the offensive line for the Bengals? Right. I mean, that's for them to go the first 15 games with the exact same offensive line and then lose one every week for the next three weeks is almost ridiculous, right? Uh, but Jackson Carmen came in there and played pretty well. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's going to have to get some help. Uh, but there's no question that, you know, this is going to be a heck of a test. Buffalo can play defense uh, inside, even without Vaughn Miller, you know, Ed Oliver, and, uh, Gregory Rousseau, some of those guys, they can get after your quarterback. They really can. No question. Ed Oliver is quick as a hiccup, man. That dude inside, I mean, he, he's a he's a load inside. I agree with you 100,000%. I mean, you know, everybody talks about Buffalo, Josh Allen, their offense, and they were number two in the NFL in scoring. But shoot, they were number two in points allowed as well. Wesley well. Frazier's defense, man, it's like they're on a string. You watch them, it's like totally choreographed. They're they're like exactly where they're supposed to be. Nobody, nobody's like uh, you know, getting selfish and trying to eat from somebody else's crop. You know, they're just where they're exactly supposed to be. 
they're they're something to watch. How do you see this football game, Chris? I mean, in the Monday night game before the the tragedy that took place with Hamlin, Bengals five plays, seventy five yards, borrowed to Boyd, boom, touchdown. And back comes Allen. Bengals defense holds uh, in the red zone, kick a field goal. Bengals come back again. They're past midfield. Tragedy strikes. Is it? Will it be a track meet like that? What do you see? Um, I, I don't know. I, it, it to me, I, and I hate to keep going back to it, but I do think the Bengals will have opportunities to work the ball down the field if they can. If they have time, they'll be able to do it. So, but if Joe has to come out and throw in two point two seconds every time, that's a different story because they play so much of that cover two uh, defense. It'll be five underneath. A lot of those quick throws will be taken away. So a game may well come down to these two quarterbacks and their abilities to make somebody make that first rusher miss to have the opportunities down the field with their great receivers that, that really both these teams have. And, and so many of their plays are down the field. You know, you just you, you think of, of what Gabriel Davis did in that game uh, against the Chiefs a year ago when they got past. You think of Stephon Diggs. Uh, all the monster plays that he's been able to make uh, down the field. So which team can apply the kind of pressure that makes you uncomfortable uh, sitting in that pocket? Pocket manipulation by the quarterbacks. I, that's that's a great call. I mean, they're going to have to almost manufacture their own time, potentially, you know, uh, to to buy more protection for themselves because of their ability to to manipulate the pocket with their footwork and everything. Uh, the other thing, thing to me is, like you say, with – if the, if the Bills are able to get pressure with their four-man rush and drop seven into coverage, and the Bengals are saying, man, we're having trouble blocking the four, let's slide the line. Now we got to chip with the back or put a tight end over there or slow block. Now we can't put five guys in route. We only have four. They got seven covering. Now you're starting to play math, and it's like, man, you know, I, I think it is going to all hinge on protection. Pressure is going to be a big deal in this football game. Well, you know better than anybody what – what being able to run the ball does to help you the protection. You know, if either one of these teams have success running the ball, yep. then that it's just going to make their lives so much easier, I, you know, because now you get that extra half second because the defensive line has to take their gap responsibility before they start taking off and rushing. So uh, it may well come down to, and we haven't, you know, you don't think about it in these terms very much, but how much does Devin Singletary, how much does James Cook, how much do they get done running the football against the Bengals and vice versa? You know, what's yeah. what's P. Ryan going to do? What's Mixon going to do? Uh, and if you can establish something of a running game and force them to commit some resources down, uh, now all of a sudden those cover twos have holes in them, you know, and and uh, that's when you start to get in behind that first level and create some catch and run plays. And and really, Bills Mafia is going to be huge with the ability for the Bengals to protect because with that crowd noise, now it's like silent snap count stuff. Guys may jump, you know, they haven't worked together much. Silent snap count, and it's like ID and okay, here's the protection. Here's here's the protection against this front. Communicate it up and down the line of scrimmage. Make sure that communication thing is right. Cap is not there. Kara said he's relied heavily on Kappa for that for that type of thing. I mean, all of that. And then now snap count. That's your only advantage. Now you're looking at the ball like the defensive lineman. Your only advantage is gone. He's better, more athletic. He's going forward. You're going backward. And at the same time, you've lost all your advantage to pass protect on the road in that crowd noise. I've been there, man, with a guy like Ed Oliver. Woo! It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, you know, and, and they've got They've got clever players on the back end, too. Milano is a clever blitzer. You know, he's a hard guy to block. He's not a big, monstrous kind of guy. Edmonds can really run. You know, he really can. Uh, but, you know, they're missing guys on the back end. Get, getting Tredavious White back, I think, will be a huge factor. I, I wonder if they try to match up at all with Jamar, uh, with Tredavious White. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, there's there's a million things to watch in this game, and, some ways I kind of wish I might have been calling this one. Didn't work out that way. So off to Kansas City we go, which will be a great game too. But but there was, you know, I spent so much of last week really studying this Bengals team. And there's 
You know, there's just so many intricacies of, of what's going on. Um, but I think I think both of them have done a, a really good job on both the offensive side to lose three offensive starters in three weeks and and win a playoff game. I don't care who you're playing. Uh, that's an impressive performance, you know, so give Callahan some credit on the on the offensive side and. And uh, Lou Anarumo, you know, I thought the adjustment that he made in game to bring Sample over there and and play on the edge and help that outside power right. run game was, was a big one too. So um, these these are really good coaches, uh, you know, they really are. We're starting to to really get a feel for Zach and what he's been able to do. And I mean, you have to remember and give Mike Brown some credit too. Two years ago, everybody wanted Zach Taylor and Lou Anarumo's head. They wanted him out of here. And Mike yep. Brown said, no, 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 we're not doing that. And re-upped, and it's been it's been all fun since. And finally, Chris, we'll get you out of here on this. You, as everybody can tell, were an unbelievably intelligent football player. I mean, football IQ is is a big deal, you know, and, and Lindy Infante and you know, Sam Weiss, they could do a million things with their offensive football team because guys could handle it mentally, you know, a big inventory of stuff. That's what Duke Tobin and the Bengal coaches have collaborated on, bringing guys in and free agency in the draft. Man, they're all football smart, you know, and they can do so many different things. They have so many positionless guys because they can handle it all mentally as well as physically. If you have 10 guys doing it, one guy screwing up, and you got to dumb it down, it doesn't work. And I think part of the reason that they've had as much success – is they've had not only the physical ability, but the mental capacity as well. And they're all babies. I mean, let's face it, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Mix. I mean, these are all young players. Yeah, That's the really exciting part of this whole thing. And uh, the, the one guy that, that Volson, throw him in there, left yep. guard, you know, what he's meant. But I, I would say if there's somebody on offense that probably is the unsung hero of this season, it would be Ted Karras. He's about the only one left up <laughs> there right now, and he is the unquestioned leader uh, of that offensive line, and now even more so with three of those guys out. And he's going to be trying to handle that crowd noise, trying to, to make the, the right calls at the line of scrimmage, and, and A, have everybody hear it, which is going to be tough. Yep. Uh, but B, to execute it with three new players. Uh, so what you can't have in this game is one of those screw-ups. You know, one of those where Joe gets hit in the back of the head because you slide the wrong way and somebody didn't get the call and or the back went the wrong way. I, I think we might see a lot of Ryan in this game just from a protection standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing Hayden Hurst is going to be almost a tackle in this <laughs> game. And every Everything will be... Let's make sure, let's go seven-man protection, get those guys out late. They're good at catching the ball late uh, and make some catch-and-run plays out of it. That's what I think you'll see. I have a hard time disagreeing with that, sir. There are no, no two ways about it. It's going to be very interesting to watch, watch the chess match, and it's always very interesting to uh, listen to and watch a broadcast that you are involved with because nobody does their homework like – Chris Collinsworth, man, you respect the game and you work at it and uh, take nothing for granted. And I respect the heck out of that. I was watching you prepare and do your thing at the last minute before the Sunday uh, night broadcast last week. And man, you're a worker. I, I admire you, man. You know, as well as anybody, it never goes away. Right. By the time we get, uh, I get finished with my last game this weekend, it'll be time to start on the draft. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell everybody. It's like I watch the NFL all football season. I watch college football all off season. So it never ends. <laughs> we appreciate you carving some time and, and visiting with us because I know you're a one-legged man in a butt kicking contest, a one arm man in a paper hanging job. I mean, it's tough duty. You are as busy as I know. And I appreciate you. You got it, Dave. Always good catching up, man. Have the best day you ever had, sir. Thank you, buddy. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know, 
got to get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.